This is the Stovax Vogue Midi T Highline. Uh, <laughs> and given my job, um, it took me way too long to work out a work on the floor. <laughs> it did. <laughs> They make three sizes of this stove. The small, the midi, like this, and then a medium, no large. Um, and within that, they have uh, lots of different options. So they've got the standard small, the small T, which is the taller version. They've got the standard midi. Then this one, which is the T version. They also do a, a wall hung version as well. And then in the medium, they do the medium and the medium slim line. And then there are lots of different bases, like log store. I mean, this is a tall log store. They do a shorter log store, and they do benches as well, um, and little plinths. And that's just one range of stove axes, by the way. <laughs> they, they, they have about eight ranges, so, and this is one of the small ones. You can get DEFRA approval, if in this case you fit this little plate, which comes with it as standard. It just stops the stove from fully shutting down. They have direct air as well. And we've got the one with the grate in the ash pan, uh, so the multi-fuel version, but they also do wood-only versions as standard. Finally, the whole range is five kilowatts other than the medium. So the medium slim line is five kilowatts, but the medium standard is seven to eight. Right, let's try and light it. Stovax have gained, or Stovax stoves have gained a little bit of a reputation for smoking into the room when you're trying to light them. I went for this stove specifically, the tall version, because it's the worst culprit. So uh, I wanted to see if it, you know, at its worst. Um, so let's see how we get on. Big logs as always at the bottom. Um, typically, there are advantages to very high efficiency stoves that can be trickier to light, uh, particularly in the way they look when they burn, but you can solve most of the lighting issues by getting this setup bit right. Fire light along the top. With this one, if you've got it set up right, you can shut it and push the end vent all the way in for the initial lighting phase. Closing the door straight away makes lighting the stove take a little bit longer, but to be fair, these issues of smoke didn't exist at all. If I do open the door, they do, <laughs> but as it is, no problem at all. These stoves run from 78 to 81% efficiency. This one is 80% efficiency, and uh, obviously it's eco-design as well. It's a stove that relies on dry fuel. When running overnight, it's tricky to keep it clean. It's easier on the wood-only version, but obviously this stove's focus is creating a really clean and contemporary look. And use it as intended, and this thing blows you away. As long as you allow the stove to burn down properly, there's no issue with smoke coming out when you're reloading. But if you put a log on and wait a little bit too long, that log will start to create smoke and cause the problem. Everything on this stove is really well finished and nicely engineered. Once I'd found it, I really liked the handle. I liked the tools, the little ash pan uh, tool and the riddling arm as well. And it comes with a pair of gloves. Then we come to the control. I don't have the DEFRA kit fitted. Normally, I am a control freak with this and I want to have a linear control that I can place it exactly where I want. This stove is designed to look fantastic and give very simple answers to people. And actually, I got on really well with it. Rather than a linear control, you've just got settings. So all the way in for when you're lighting the stove, one click out for when you're burning coal, one click out again to shut it right down, or one click out to fully out for when you're burning wood. 
course, the main reason why I really liked it is because it's really effective. <laughs> this stove in any of its guises was obviously designed as a fantastic focal point. This particular one uh, ran for eight to 11 hours. There's a bit of variation there and that came down to whether you had ash in the ash pan or not. Obviously when you're burning coal, you empty the ash. When you're burning wood, leave the ash in and keep a bed in there. Because that's also the difference between being able to run it overnight and not. This stove needs dry fuel and a user who's willing to do those things to get the best results. It's clean, it's crisp, it looks fantastic. So again, it needs a user who cares about that. Leave dust and ash around, burn wet wood on it or burn it just shut down. It's like buying a sports car and doing the tip run in it. It's mad and it's also your fault. This stove is beautifully made, it's tough clean, controllable, and it does those magic floating flames. It's designed to make a high-end interior look even more high-end, and it does it really well. If you're somebody who takes pride in your home, wants things to look really nice, then any faults like uh, that you might get from wet fuel use or not doing things right are gonna be mitigated simply by the fact that you want everything to be done right and to look right. Uh, and if you're willing to do that and be that person, then what it gives you in return is worth every bit of it.